Hey everyone, in this video I'll teach you how to use regressions in Desmos. If you're new here, my name is Olivier and I'm a certified math and physics teacher in Ontario who is currently doing a master's in statistics at Carleton University. Okay, so we're starting with a blank Desmos page here. All the links to the finished products will be in the description below, the timestamps as well, so make sure to check those out. First thing we'll do is we'll create data, right? Because for regression we need data. And here we're doing linear regression, so we're going to try to get data on a straight line. So to create a folder in Desmos, you can click the plus sign here, go to folder, or here I found out recently that you can just type folder and you have a folder. So let's call these uh, this folder data, and then you press enter, it creates a new line. So then we'll create a table of observations. So again, you can do the plus in table, but we can type T-A-B-L-E, table, and we'll create data. So I'll just create something very basic here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that is uh, uh, a line, right? In the slope one. But uh, what we can do here, yeah, it is slope one. I just have to make sure. What we can do is we can zoom in manually. But another trick is that you can click the plus sign on the table. It creates a zoom fit. So that looks pretty good. We can zoom in a little more, a little less, whatever we want. I like to make things pretty, so I'll, I'll remove the grid. It makes things uh, nicer. We can add some arrows. I like it in both directions. Name this the X, name this the Y. This could be, for example, or I call the T here, Y. Um, it could be as weight increase, or as the height of someone increases, Typically the weight increases. There's a correlation between the two, right? And if we hover to the points, I can change them, let's say to blue points. That might be nice. And I'll hover on the drag because I don't want it to be a perfect line here. Um, I, can, I can drag them a bit. So you see this icon, so then we can move them so they're not on a perfect line, but we can still do a line of best fit right like you can imagine a line going through this uh, these points that minimizes the distance between the points and the line so that's our data uh, whatever you think it is weight height whatever it is so now i just create a new folder and let's call this regression or linear regression because there's different types you can do a quadratic regression if you have points like this right or exponential like this sine like this and so on so linear regression uh, in Desmos and any line what's the equation of any line that you've learned probably around grade 9 if you did your schooling in Ontario Canada it's y equals mx plus b right so y equals mx plus b so that's a note I just did the quotation marks it adds a note and then m is the slope right m is the slope which is how steep the line is. Negative is like this, positive is like that. It might be reversed on your screen, not sure. And B, B is the Y intercept, all right? So the, the Y intercept, it, it's where the line crosses the Y axis. So we can expect ours to be around one and our slope to be close to one as well. So now this is the regression part. What we do is we write our y variable which in this case is y subscript one so to do a subscript in desmos you can just press one and it puts it at the bottom there so you see we have five element list that makes sense because that's what we want here we can uh, and then the the regression you use a tilde or tilde it's the little wave symbol so for me it's shift and then i press the the, the key on my keyboard beside the one and it creates a little wave, so just every keyboard will be a bit different. But the wave is very important here. And then I write M, because that's my slope. I could write other things, it doesn't need to be M. I could call it A, for example, A, X plus B. But here I'll use M, because that's how we've seen it. And then X1, that's my other set of points. And then this is the model, like the linear model that doesn't have a Y intercept, because I didn't type plus B. So this is why it goes through the middle, right? So then when I write plus B, you see that it doesn't go through the middle, it, it's something like we thought around one. In this case, it's 1.44, right? 
So as you see here in the box, you have a bunch of statistics. Our slope is close to one, it's 0 0.95. That's close to one, that makes sense. So that's the slope of our model. And then the y-intercept is 1.44. R squared is just um, a measure of how good the model is. And in this case, the, the model explains 94% of the variation in the response variables that that's that's pretty good and that's any like uh, anything close to one is very good and then r is just a correlation i think it's pearson correlation 0 0.97 that's again it's very good but our data is like almost perfect right because we started out perfect and we just dragged it a bit and if we drag the point like this for example you see that our r squared goes down because it's it's less of a tight fit right there's more variation so if we drag this one up like this, you see that R squared goes up or goes down, sorry. So let's keep this point down for now. And now let's explore the uh, concept of residuals. Residuals are essentially, like when we say plot here, you see that we have a third column, the E1s, and it's essentially the distance between the line and the dot. So you can see if we just zoom in horizontally on those residuals that this one is the biggest residual. There's a difference of 2.18 between the line and the dot. So the line here is about 3.9. That's the Y value. And then this is 1.73. So if you do 3.9 minus 1.73, you're going to get something around 2.18, right? So it's the distance, the, the points that are very close, you're going to have small residuals. So this point here, it's like zero point, uh, yeah, it's gonna be 0.5-ish, and if we look, it's 0.65. It's very close, very close. The first point has a bit more distance, and so on. So again, the residuals, uh, they, they, they're the distance from the point to the line, and there's a concept in statistics that the average, so if you type mean of E1 of your residuals, it'll always be zero. Desmos says something like a very, very small number. That's just because there's some approximations and the way uh, calculators work. But anything times 10 to the negative 16 is essentially zero, right? Like there's 16 zeros before the two or 15. But yeah, it doesn't matter. The average of the residuals are zero. That's just like a, the way regressions work. So now we have a line that go a line of best fit that goes through the point a linear regression model and what we want to do let's say is to get a, um, a the equation and display it on our screen okay so what we're going to do is create another folder let's call it label and we're gonna uh, let's just make a point that we can move here uh, add sliders to all let's label this thing and I'll add a card to the video where you can make dynamic labels in Desmos. I'll just, um, I won't go through it all again, but you can watch that video that appears in the corners. And the way you do this to type LaTeX in Desmos label is you just put two ticks. So the same key on my keyboard uh, for the tilde, the little wave, I just tap it without pressing shift. I get two ticks. And then you see that the label, I'll, uh, I'll just move this thing a bit. Um, let's, let's say we want to put it here. I'll get rid of the residuals and maybe we can put it, uh, in blue cause our line is blue or in red and let's make our line red as well. How about that? And that's going to be our equation. Okay. So Y is equal to M X M X plus B. So that's nice, but we want M and B to be the actual things, right? Like from our they, they, we want it to be 1.05 and 0 0.7. So what we're going to do is we do dollar sign, squiggly bracket, squiggly bracket on both sides of the M, anything that's a value in Desmos. And so that's going to be a dynamic label. So that is our, um, our line here, our equation of the line. And if we drag a point, you see that the labels adjust as well. So that's very, very useful. Okay. So one more thing with linear regressions that you can do is you can create predictions, right? So 
most of the time the reason we model is to do predictions so what if I tell you now that um, like there's a value with 5 x is equal to 5 what is the value of y what can we predict the value of y to be well all you do is you sub in the 5 in your y equals mx plus b and you're gonna get something close to 5 okay like you're gonna get let's say it would be uh, we move here 5 it'd be 6.04 if you sub in x equals 5 into this you would get uh, 6.04 so what you can do is create a function of x you can call it whatever but we'll call it m x plus b and as you can see it's this new thing so then if we do a new value like f at 5 it should be 6.04 so that's how you do predictions once you have a linear model in Desmos. You can create this with a bunch of data. You can copy paste data from Google Sheet into Desmos. If you just copy paste the values, it'll create a, a table in Desmos. So that's very useful. And that's about it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you in another episode of Do the Work. Mm -hmm.